I'm Paige Ann Olson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to make this apron. It's a quick sew pattern, number K4300. I'm going to make mine in red today. I've already made a white one that I wanted to show you. It's more like a smock. We're going to use these when we make Christmas cookies in a couple of weeks. So please join me while I make the red one. So I have my pattern pieces pinned onto my fabric. I bought about two and a half yards, I think, of this uh, red for the medium size. The pattern, because it has five different sizes on it, it recommends, and so do I, that you actually trace the size that you want because I'm going to be making three out of the five sizes. So I went ahead and just got this tracing paper at Staples and traced the pattern onto the tracing paper, which is what I'm going to use to cut out the size medium uh, smock apron. And uh, just make sure that you label your pieces. So you, if you want to go back and make them later, you won't forget, oh, is this the back or the front or whatever. Of course, you have your pattern that will tell you that too. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and I'll be back in just a few minutes and show you what the next step is. So I have um, cut out my pattern pieces and this is the front. I pressed the seam out um, in the middle of the front. And here are my tabs. And then here are the two pieces of the back. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do something called stay stitching. So we're gonna stay stitch from here to the middle and here to the middle and then the armholes on the front and the back. The stay stitching will help keep that curve line the way you want it to, to um, stable. You, it, you wanna keep it stable. And I'm gonna um, do that about a quarter of an inch in because this is gonna be covered later by the bias tape. So that's the next step. I'm gonna go to the machine and do that. I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So I've completed my stay stitching on the front and the back. So it's done. The next step is to sew the back together, <clears throat> right sides together. My, my fabric is the same on both sides, but if you have a printed fabric, you are going to wanna put right sides together. And I'm going to seam the back and we're gonna do a regular 5 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to um, press it to one side and then top stitch it on the, on the, which will be the back front side. I'll show you how to do that though. I'll show you what that's gonna look like. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the seam down the middle of the back and put the two back pieces together. That's the next step. I have replaced my presser foot with my general purpose presser foot instead of my quarter of an inch one. And I'm gonna show you kind of this nifty little tool um, it looks like this. It's yellow. At least mine is yellow. I don't know if they have them in different colors or not, but they call it the seam guide ruler. And you'll notice the measurements. These are a bunch of different seam allowances that you can use. We're going to uh, use the 5 eighths of an inch today. And that's what you use for aprons and clothing and bags. Oh, sometimes bags are 3 eighths of an inch. But the way you use this little tool is you actually find the seam allowance that you want. Mine happens to be 5 eighths of an inch. And I try to align that with my needle as close as closely as I can and put my needle down into that hole. And there's a little magnet that comes with the seam guide ruler. It looks like that. And you actually just place it on the metal part of your bed, your sewing machine bed, right up snug to the right of this seam guide ruler. But make sure that when you take this out, you lift up your presser foot, that you also lift up your needle. Otherwise your needle will break. So, and that's how we're gonna use, I'm gonna put my fabric right up against that magnet and that's a very tight magnet, it will not move. And then I'm gonna put my, make my seam and I'll be right back. So I have gone ahead and sewn the back together 
there's my seam. And I'm gonna press just to lock in the seam. Just press that seam or where I stitched a little bit. And then we'll open this up and I'll show you the next step. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna press the seam over to, I'll do it to the right side. And <clears throat> so what I will do is I will press and starch this so it gets a really nice crisp seam. And I'll use my, you know, my clapper. I like to use my clapper. This has got a little bit of, um, the back has a curve in it when you cut it out. So <clears throat> it has, you know, it has some stretch to it, which is good because that's what you want because you want it to kind of fall over your kind of snug, not snug, but go in at your waist and give you a little bit more fullness in your hips. And that's theoretically what that should do. So when I'm done uh, pressing the seam over, then on the, this, on the front side, I will stitch very close to the seam, probably fourth of an inch away from that seam. And then I'll do another line, uh, another fourth of an inch over. So we'll have two top stitch seams coming down the middle of the back. So that will help it kind of look, makes it look finished looking and nice and professional. So I have completed the top stitching. Whoops, if I can show it to you, I want you to be able to see it. There are my two um, top stitch seams, and they're probably a little closer than, that's probably an eighth of an inch, not a fourth of an inch, but it, it just kind of uh, secures the seam on the back. So the next step, once I press the seam down, is we're going to put right sides together of our front and our back apron, and we're gonna sew those together, matching our notches, the front and the back at the shoulders, matching those notches, just like that. We're gonna take a 5 8 of an inch seam right across the top on both sides, again, making sure those notches line up. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna press the that back top stitch, steam, top stitch seam just to make sure it gets nice and straight. And then when I'm done with that and sewing the shoulder together, I'll show you what comes next. I have sewn the shoulders together and I pressed it and and put my clapper on it to give it a nice crisp seam. So now it's start, starting to resemble like a little smock. And I have, I bought this bias tape. I wanna make sure you can actually see it. It's a red and white check. It's a half of an inch wide. And we're gonna open, we're gonna open it in half like that. And then I'm gonna take my iron and open it one side again and gently press that open. This is what we're gonna actually put against the raw edge of the raw edge of our neckline. So it's gonna end up going on our neckline like that. Just like that. Raw edges up and we're gonna press that, but don't press it so much that you can't see the crease. We're gonna to wanna to keep that crease visible because you're gonna actually use that crease as your stitch line. You don't have to, but it's just easier. Okay, so I'm gonna prep this um, bias tape, meaning I'm gonna go ahead and press it open, and then I'll be back in just a second and show you how I'm gonna do it. So this next part, I have pressed open one side of the um, seam the binding and I've pinned it all the way around the neck hole and I've got a little bit this is a little tricky but I'm what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've kind of measured 
that that's what I'm going to need for the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and then I'm going to make a seam in this binding and then attach it to the neckline. Um, instead of folding it over and folding it over again, I don't like that big um, mess of seam there. So I'm going to go ahead and just seam the binding and uh, make one round seam binding. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean in a second if that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I have gone ahead and um, seam, put the seam in the bias tape. You can see that seam, hopefully you can see that seam. And I have attached the bias tape right sides together uh, on the neckline all the way around, just like this. Hopefully you can see it. And um, where that first fold that we pressed open a little bit, where that is, we're going to actually go ahead and um, that will be our seam allowance when we're sewing the bias tape onto the neckline. And that's our next step. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right. Oh, one thing I will tell you, one of the things that's nice about this bias tape is if you don't quite measure it exactly, um, the bias tape exactly to the neckline, you can actually, because it's bias, it's on the bias, you can actually kind of ease that in and then you'll have a really nice perfect circle that goes around your neckline. I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back and show you what's next. So now I have sewn the um, bias tape to the edge of the neckline and what I'm going to do before I press this is I'm going to clip the edges all the way around being careful not to clip through that either the stay stitching or the bias tape seam. So you're gonna just take a little bitty bite, get a really sharp pair of scissors, a little bitty bite all the way around, and that'll help when we turn this over, it will help um, the bias tape lay nicely. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So I have gone ahead and clipped this and cut the uh, seam and we're going to do something called under stitching now once you have uh, done your clipping you're going to take your bias tape and you're going to press it away from the garment catching the seam so the the bias tape and the seam will be pressed up or out away from the garment and then we're going to take including um, capturing the seam we're going to do a small stitch well it doesn't have to be small it can be you know a two point length stitch and we're going to stitch the bias tape to the seam right along the edge of the bias tape you don't want to get it onto the body just the bias tape when we finish the under stitching we're going to turn the bias tape inside so it's going to look like that and then we're going to do another um, an out a top stitching seam but it should not show on this side at all they call that under stitching and the idea is that then the neck won't roll that's the whole idea of under stitching so i'm going to do that now and remembering remember you're just going to capture the bias tape with that seam right there um, you're just going to do it right along the edge, just like that. So hopefully that's clear. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I have done the understitching, and this is what it looks like, just like that. It's real close to the edge. And now all I'm going to do is on that seam line, I'm going to fold this back. I'm going to press it and pin it, and then I'm going to do <clears throat> a top stitch, probably... Oh, I don't know, about three-fourths of the way, maybe do a five-eighths of an inch top stitch around the neckline. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I want to show you what I have done, just so you can see it. Here is my um, understitching. I think I showed that to you before. So I've gone ahead and I have folded the bias tape 
down toward the inside and I've pinned it, I pressed it and pinned it. And I'm going to take a stitch right there on the edge of that bias tape to tack it down and to give it a nice top stitch around the outside. And then you'll kind of get an idea of how cute that's gonna look on the apron when it's finished. Okay, so I have now um, sewed the bias tape down in the back. You can see both of those seams, I sewed that. And then this is what it kind of looks like on the outside. And again, the, ins the bias tape shouldn't be seen anywhere on the outside. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do exactly the same thing with that bias tape, only you're gonna do it on the armholes and you're gonna just leave the ends of the bias tape for now because we're gonna to need to seam up the side seams in, well, at least part of the side seams in a bit. But we're gonna do the bias tape on the, both armholes first. That's the next step. I have finished the bias tape for the armholes. And here, this is what it looks like. I wanted to show it to you. And I've done it on both sides and you see the top stitching um, created by sewing the bias tape down. And I've finished the neck and both armholes. So the next thing that we need to do is the tabs that go get sewn in on the side. Now, if you don't want to do the tabs, you don't have to. The tabs are just decorative. They don't have a purpose. They don't, the button is just uh, sewn on, but it doesn't open or close the smock or the apron. So what I bought is, um, the pattern calls for interfacing. Um, and this is just kind of a lightweight interfacing. It's fusible on one side. And um, it's a kind of, uh, fusible that you would use, fusible interfacing that you would use for clothing, for necklines or a bodice. Um, anyway, so you're going to cut two of those um, interfacing pieces to match the tab, and you're going to uh, press on the fusible side, which is the bumpy side or the glue side. You're going to put that on your tab now, if, if this was a printed fabric, it would be, you'd put it on the wrong side. And um, if you have a cloth to put over that, you can do that. And if you don't, I just turn it over like this on my mat and I just hold the iron. You wanna leave it on there long enough for the, the glue to kind of melt, um, which is just a couple minutes. And then I just verify to make sure. Just going to give a little bit of stiffness. I've already done this one. I'm just going to not quite, this one isn't quite pressed down all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. Let it cool a little bit because it's really hot right now. So it should stick. And so you have two of them sewn just like that. And that's the front. That's the wrong side. So to make the tab, you're just gonna take your other two pieces and you're gonna place these right sides together, just like that, matching the notches right there at the bottom for both of them. So it should look like this, and then this side should have the fusible. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna seam all the way around here, just like that. And you're gonna leave the bottom open, just like that. And we're gonna take a 3 eighths of an inch seam all the way around that tab on both of these. And I'll be right back and show you what that looks like. So here are my tabs sewn together. Hopefully you can see the seam right there. And I'm just gonna give that a quick little press to set the stitching. And then all we're gonna do now is turn this right side 
out or wrong sides together and just kind of do it gently. It's a little bit narrow and, oh, no, first, actually, no, 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 first, we've got to trim it. So I'm going to trim it, trim this corners, and I'm just going to trim the seam a little bit to make it easier to turn. I hope I showed that to you okay. Let me make sure that's actually, yeah. And we're just gonna, that'll make it much easier to turn. Clip it just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of the seam on both sides. And do the same thing for both of them. Oops. And now, now we're gonna turn them. That will make it much easier. And again, it's still, you know, a little narrow, so be kind of gentle. And then I have this nifty little this little point turner thing. I think I've shown this to you before, and there's two sides, and this is the sharp point for the corners, and then this is um, to kind of more gent, it's a more of a gentle point, so you don't poke the hole in the fabric. That's the, kind of the idea. When I'm done um, bringing this out, what I'm going to do is press it, and then I'm going to take a quarter inch seam. Well, actually, a quarter inch top stitch is what, what I'm really going to do, not a seam. I'm going to use this real quick. And see how that kind of just gently pulls that. And I can flip it to the other side. And then I'll use my point just gently for that tab end, because that tab should kind of come to a bit of a point, just like that. And that's what it should look like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press, uh, turn the other one out, press both of them and take a quarter of an inch top seam all the way around the edges. And then I'm gonna do a basting stitch at the bottom so that we can go ahead and attach it to the sides of our apron. So that'll be the, my next step, and I'll be back and show you what that looks like when I'm done. So here is my completed tab, and I have done a quarter inch top stitch around here and a basting stitch here. And using the notches that are on the bottom of the tab, I already cut mine off, I didn't mean to, but so don't do what I just did. Anyway, on the back, the apron back, you're going to take your tab and matching your notches to the back right at the, um, where those notches meet, and you're just gonna pin that together on both sides. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and go ahead and attach the tab to the back part of the, to the back of the apron. And so I'll be right back when I finish that, show you what that looks like. So I have sewn my tab onto the back of uh, my apron on both sides. I just wanted to show you that's what it looks like. And we are now ready to put on the pocket. I've prepared the pockets. You're actually gonna um, pick whatever fabric. You could even, you know, match it exactly. But my sister is very whimsical, and I thought she would think this is really cute fabric. They're little gingerbreads, I hope, fully gingerbread man. I hope you can see that. And um, I also have a brown kind of a wood button I'm gonna put on the tab, and I thought that would uh, make that really cute. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold this top down about an inch and a half. I'm sorry, an inch and a quarter. 
and then you're gonna take this part right here and press that up about a quarter of an inch. So that basically you're gonna have from the top to the bottom of this fold about an, about an inch. And now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew um, on down here on the side and on the bottom a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I have sewn my pocket. Um, here's my seam on the left hand side and on the bottom and I'm going to take my scissors and um, right in this corner I'm going to cut about a fourth of an inch away from the seam and a little bit into the facing or the fold and I'll probably just cut this little extra piece off right there. And using my turner, I'm gonna turn this over just like that. Take my little point turner. And then I have my pocket, basically my dimensions of my pocket. So I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna press it right to that seam where I sewed the seam I'm hoping you can see this. Um, and I'm gonna do it right along the edge so that when I turn the pocket over and place it on the apron, um, that seam won't show. Because we're gonna top stitch this, but we're gonna just top stitch the top of the pocket first. And then when I sew the pocket actually on, we'll sew it We'll sew the, the pocket um, on to the apron front and we'll sew it on this side and at the bottom. And that will in fact make our top stitch and sew it onto the body of the apron. One thing I didn't tell y'all, I just forgot, is that this apron um, is for uh, my sister, who's pretty short, she's about 5'3", and so I went ahead and cut off about four inches of the bottom of the apron, because I thought it would probably come down below her knees. I'm hoping that will be enough, um, and it will hit her at the right place. And I'm going to go ahead and sew it, or hem it, the way I have it, and then hopefully I won't have to redo it. So here's the pocket turned out. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and top stitch just that top um, seam or the top pocket part of the pocket. Uh, and then I'll get ready to put it on the actual apron. And I'll show you what we do after that. So here are my pockets. They are sewn on to the front of my apron. So this is what it looks like right now. So the last step is to do the hem. So I'm gonna take my hem line. This is the inside of the back, and I'm gonna fold this up about 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna press this 5, eighth, five eighths of an inch all the way on both the back and the front and then I'm going to take this hem or this crease fold and I'm going to fold it in half like that again just like this and fold that under and that's what I'm going to seam that's going to be my seam or I'm sorry that's going to be my hem and when I'm done with the bottom on both the front and the back we're gonna do the same thing on the side. So I'm gonna go do that now and I'll be back. Okay, so I have gone ahead and hemmed um, the apron and right at the top where the two pieces come together where the tab is, I've gone ahead and used, I had some little scraps of bias tape left over and I just folded it over like that because it was kind of an open um, seam. And if you don't want to do that, you can always 
do a zigzag over it, that would work as well. Um, so I'm done with that and I'm gonna do it on the other side. And really all you have to do is when you sew the two sides together like this, um, it's a little tricky. You're gonna sew it right along where the tab comes together or comes out. Oops, let me. You're gonna sew it right there. And it's only, you're only gonna sew it probably about, I don't know, from here right to there. And then that's what I used this for to cover that up when it was done, just because it was kind of a messy seam. And so when you open it up, what it's gonna look like is, here's your tab right there. And when we're done sewing this, when we're done with both of the sides, I'm gonna take the tab and I'm just gonna sew, hand sew a button right there. And then that's what it's gonna look like. Oops. And once you do that, our apron is done. The only thing left is to attach the button where the on the back where the tab is. I hope you can see um, what it looks like once it's been hemmed and I put the side together. And this is the button I selected, and I'm just going to attach that, just hand sew that to the back. And then our apron will be done. And I think it turned out very cute. I think she's going to really like it. So here is my completed red apron. This is for the sister that's a little bit shorter than the other one. And I have sewn the buttons on. I, I wanted to show that to you. They kind of match the pocket. That was the idea. And here is the white one that I made earlier for my other sister. And I'm going to make myself a green one because we're going to actually wear these the day we make Christmas cookies. So we'll have not matching, but coordinating aprons. So I think I'm going to make myself a denim one also for everyday use because I think that'd be cute. And I love the pattern. I love that it's a smock and covers your entire body or covers your clothes so you don't get um, you don't get food on your clothes, which is the purpose of an apron. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave comments for me. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm curious what's under your needle today.